Okay. Welcome everyone to our weekly builder series here with our great investor community. I am Danielle Pulesky Brown with the Kaza Group, uh, agent investor, uh, and I specialize working with builders and developers, just like Raj Tamang, my co-host here uh, with Green Valley Custom homes or custom builders. I am really excited about today because we got huge feedback from a couple of weeks back uh, when we had mentioned possibly doing an episode of talking about how to decide if a wall is load bearing or non load bearing. And uh, Raj and I kind of went back and forth on the best way to do this. So we figured let's show you some examples um, and talk it through and answer any of your questions as we go. Uh, so Raj, why don't you kick it off? I'm really excited to talk about this because I feel like most people just walk into a house and they start like tapping on a wall. Trying to figure <laughs> yeah. out, you know what I mean? It was like, oh, yeah. is this load bearing? Oh, what do you think of this beam? Is this decorative? How do you know? How do you actually know? Like what? What tips and tricks can you give us as we're walking into these properties trying to decide, can I knock down this wall in this kitchen or not? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very excited too because this is one of the things that is a lot of investors, a lot of contractors, they call me. Um, especially now with the old house, you have maybe 50, 100 year old homes. If you go to DC, maybe even old, older than 100 year homes. Yeah. Um, in Northern Virginia, Arlington, uh, McLean, you have houses these are built in 50s and 40s. Um, the way they used to design then and now is different, right? Now is open floor plan, open concept. They don't want any, they don't want to see any walls and any lot of, you know, and I have a lot of open windows and doors outside. Um, the open concept versus before was not that concept. It looked like they have a lot of rooms, so they need this space, right? Yeah. Now, the part of your renovation project is that they want to knock down the walls. Um, th this is very common. One of the common walls they would like to knock down is the wall between, let's say, kitchen and a dining room, right? Dining mm -hmm. room, living room, or family room. Um, at least if you have this open floor plan on the main level, that's where you will enjoy most of your daytime if you are working from home or you are staying home in the weekend. Um, so people are always ask me, hey, how do I know this is a bearing wall? This is not load bearing wall. If I can um, take this wall out, um, you know, make it open. Um, but there are a few things um, you have to remember. It's not, you know, it's a structural engineer. I'm a structural engineer doing for almost, uh, you know, 17, 18 years. But still, what's behind the drywall and something that I can see, I cannot see, you know? No, yeah, there's no way to know. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. You have a 25 years of expense or 100 years of expense. You don't have actually vision, right? You have to, you have to open up the drywall. When I come to the side, I tell a contractor, make sure you open up the drywall. Make sure that your ceiling, um, you expose some part of the ceiling. I can see how the floor joists and how floor system are built. You know, mm -hmm. those are a part of uh, uh, of the requirement that to. Um, see uh, if the wall is load bearing wall or not. Um, then let's say you have this wall and you find out, okay, this is not load bearing wall. Can you just take it out? Uh, yes or no, okay? Um, but most likely yes, and I'll explain to you why no. Um, but if it is load bearing wall, definitely you cannot take it out, right? You have to do definitely something about that wall or floor system to support above if there's a roof um then you have to the common method is replace that bearing wall with a new beam mm -hmm. right and when so you like across the ceiling you mean correct beam across there. the ceiling you have to provide a beam and a beam is always needs to be supported by a column or a post that it's at its end mm. um, then post has to be continued down to the foundation because you have to remember um uh, that the point load we call a point load coming from the post. You cannot just leave it on the floor, right? You cannot just hang it on the floor. That has to be down, continued down to the foundation. That's why on, on the house, you have a foundation, you have a footing. So the footing purpose of the footing is all the loads coming from the structure above is safely distributed into the ground. That's mm -hmm. what we're okay? So I'm going to talk about a little bit of a basic of it because if I just say bearing wall, non-load bearing wall, 
why this is load bearing wall, why not load bearing wall, why I have to design a load bearing wall. If load bearing wall is so complicated to remove, let's not have any load bearing wall, right? So, well, but then there is a load to bear though. Like there is like, how do you keep a second story on, you know, up? How do you keep the roof from collapsing in? Like, you know what I mean? Like that, that's, I'm very curious how all of this works with like an open concept and how you can actually bear that weight or figure out if something in the middle is bearing that weight. Correct. That's why, like I said, you have to have a bearing wall or you have to have a bearing system, right? Mm -hmm. Because, um, uh, the same same thing you explained before. If you have a roof above, you have to support the roof system. If you have a floor above, you have to support the floor. Um, so let me let me get back to uh, to the slide. Can I click on the slide? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I quickly prepare this slide. What is load bearing wall and non load bearing wall? So first of all, you need to understand when you say load bearing wall, it's simple, right? It's supporting the load or you know, you, it's supporting the structure. Uh, when you say non-load wing wall, it's just a partition wall. It's just a you know, dividing wall that divides the space, right? So it's not carrying any load, it's just a divide. It's just dividing the space. That's the non-load wing wall. Um, now you have to remember when you have a load bearing wall or non-load bearing wall, overall, uh, if you look at this, this you know, framing you see, um, I don't know how much clear it is, but you see, you have a roof framing, which is roof trusses. Um, this is a second floor, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, second floor walls. You have a roof? Um, then you have, a, this is a second floor system. And this Are is you the changing floor. the slides, Raj? No, I'm not changing the slide. Can you see okay, I just want to make sure. Yes. Do you I, see my mouse? Very, very little, that. but I think we have a different screen than what everybody else can see. Can oh, see okay. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So I was just saying that overall, when you have walls, it's a wall, right? It's not a floor system or roof. It's a wall you are talking about. So mm -hmm. if you look at this, uh, you know, first slide, you see, you see framing for a single family house. Um, you have to think about what are the design load you consider in design a house, because then you say, okay, what are the load you have to consider in designing a structure? What are the structural element you have to design to support those loads, right? Mm -hmm. So in general, there are other many factors you have to consider, but in general, in a house like this, um, we consider dead load. It's got a dead load, which is weight of the structure itself, right? Um, mm -hmm. Which means, you know, all this framing, also finishes, like some of the cabinets, uh, you know, um, countertops, all those heavy stuff attached to the building is called a dead weight. So we have to consider the weight of that when you design this structure, okay? Mm -hmm. And we said live load, which is the weight of the people, um, the people living in the house, that's a live load. So you have to consider dead load, which is the weight of the structure. Um, also, you have to remember, um, if you have a, let's say, give you an example, in a uh, house, you have a main level, you have a big kitchen. Um, so kitchen, you have a big island, maybe you have a lot of cabinets, but that's an additional load. So typically in the yeah. kitchen, you have a more load than other part of the house, like in bedroom, most likely very minimum, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, but if it's kitchen, it's, let's say master bathroom, you have a lot of tiles and glasses, it's very heavy stuff. Uh, um, so when you typically design your system, floor system or structural element supporting mainly master bathrooms and a kitchen, you have to beef off the system, okay? You probably have to have the joist, floor joist maybe spaced closely or maybe double up the same way because the load distribution is the same. Um, mm -hmm. Those things you have to keep in mind, right? Now, and also another thing, it's a dead load and live load. And another thing is also very common this day, it's a wind load in our area. Um, if you design house in our area, you have to design for wind. Mm. If you design somewhere in California, yeah, maybe not wind, they, then seismic. That's an earthquake load you have to consider. Got it. Okay. But even though we have an earthquake in this area, it's very minimum. So 
Um, <laughs> you're gonna have to consider that in our design for residential construction like this, it's called a light frame construction. But if you design a concrete structure like parking garage or you know, high-rise building, then you still have to consider you know, seismic load or artery load in the design, even in our area. Um, wow. But in general, it's called light frame construction, light frame construction, which is wood framing. We don't have to consider this uh, seismic, you just do for wind load. So then you have to remember the wind is actually pushing the building in any direction. It could be trying to lift the building up or try to push in the lateral directions. It could be applying in any directions where your dead load and live load, we call gravity load, is always towards the center of the arc. So vertically down. Okay, always vertically right. down. So our purpose is you have to design all this structural system in the house where all the load, let's say coming from the roof, from the second floor, from the first floor, going to the foundation system, right? Which is usually the concrete foundation system or footings. And mm -hmm. from that, it goes to the ground, okay? I don't know where it goes from the ground. And the whole purpose of design is we have to safely take this load from the our structure to the ground, right? If the footing is not properly designed, yes, then the house would be sinking, right? Maybe set up, settlement. Um, if the soil is bad soil, then you'll see the soil, uh, your house or settling crash on the foundations. Those are the, some of the signs. I think I have another, we have another topic coming soon, maybe next month. We'll talk about some of the common problem you will see in the house. Mm -hmm. um, that's foundation settlement is very common, right? We'll talk about that later. Sure. Okay, great. Yeah, um, I, I think that will be very important, especially for flippers and real estate investors. We're always looking for bad looking house, right? A creepy house, an old house that nobody wants to buy that's the perfect for us but again yeah. if they're structurally really bad and you might have to spend a lot of money then you have to consider that cost in your calculations factor when you calculate your profit or return on investment yeah but, you absolutely. Know, good thing about me is that when i see any cracks in the you know foundation if the house is settling not that you know if it's really crazy that's a different story but um, you know, you have a minor settling, you minor crack all throughout the house. I really doesn't scare me. I know that what it is and what can be done, what can be done, you know? Yeah. Um, Which not all contractors do. Not all contractors are created the same like that. Exactly. And one of the things, yes, because, you know, um, because if it is easy fix, easy innovation, everybody wants to do it. Right. But the problem is always looking for something. Um, you know, different or, uh, you know, when you see a lot of foundation cracks and, you know, settlements, there would be very few contract, uh, very investors, um, people will be, will be willing to buy that house. But if you know what you're doing, even if you are not a structural engineer like me, you can always hire a structural engineer, right? Yeah. Um, maybe you spend a few hundred dollars, a couple of thousand dollars doing all that evaluation. But then maybe you will be saving ten, twenty thousand dollars or at the end in a profit. Um, if you can take care of that issue, you know, structurally, it has to be structurally sound and stable solutions. But it 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 can be because most of the residents in construction is 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 very easy to fix. There now with the with the technology, there are so many different means and method um, you know we can use to reinforce those structural crack to structure or foundation settlement, you can even jack up the whole house now, you know? Yeah. So you don't have to scare. Uh, it depends what type of structure, what type of investment you would like to do, um, you know, what kind of risks you wanna, you wanna take. But I think, uh, you know, seeking advice of, of right professional will save a time and headache and probably also money, right? If you, yeah. If you don't know what you're doing, you have a you know problem, structural problem in the house, and you just did it. Um, it may come back and bite you, you know, because you know this could be very costly for you as investors. Yeah. Um, oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So, do you have a couple of examples of different um, ways to kind of, or at least examples of load bearing versus non load bearing walls? Let's maybe just look at those first. All right. So yes, I do. I'm, 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 I don't know how much um, I can explain here. I have a few slides showing the load bearing wall and load, non-load bearing wall. So like I said, load bearing walls are the one that's supporting the load. 
core system, roof system, non-load bearing are not. But if you remember, I said, if it's load bearing wall, you can't, you can't just remove it. We know it, right? Because you have to provide some kind of beams and footings um, in a post to support the floor system or roof above. If it's non-load bearing wall, so it's not supporting the load, but these days, I said before, the third load, it's a dead load and live load, and mm -hmm. I say wind load. So the wind load is, we call it bra wall bracing, you have to design. The wall bracing means that in your house, if you have a, too many doors and windows, and you don't have enough solid wall, then that's a problem. Because mm. then when the wind hits a building, it may just, uh, your house may just fall apart. <laughs> or it may, there's different three conditions can happen when there's a big wind hits a building. One thing is your whole building can go up, right? Like you can, you know, um, but. You like know, the Wizard of Oz, uh, like <laughs> slipped up. <laughs> so tough. Um, and second thing it can happen, it, it can just, it's a sway on the side. Your foundation is in place. But house is like in swing, you know, like going on one side, like incline, right? Yes. Um, another it can is the whole structure can overturn. Um, but how you can prevent is not having too many doors and windows or openings in the house. So that's the problem now because everybody wants to have there a lot of doors and windows. And, windows. <laughs> and, and yeah. as a structural engineer, I'm fighting every day with my architects and builder that you cannot do that because, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a balance, it's right? It's got to be that balance of, of function and uh, attractiveness and safety, really. Safety, I guess it's safety. Exactly. You have to maintain the structural integrity of the building, which is, you know, yes, you have a lot of doors and windows opening, open concept, but then how are we going to support that structure? So that's the always challenge. Architects and we structural engineers are always fighting, you know. Um, but me and designers, I'm sure designers, exactly. And exactly. me being a builder now is always looking for now, which gives me advantage that, okay, I want to have an open concept, but I also know how much I can get, you know, so yeah. that I don't have to jeopardize the structure integrity of the building. So one of the things that I say about doors and window, a lot of doors and windows in this, in the house, is there are different way of doing it. You can do a steel frame, a moment frame, or there are a lot of steel portal frame. You can do it, but then it, it becomes expensive. Um, yeah. But you say, hey, I don't want to spend too much money on this, you know, steel framing, um, but I want to have a lot of windows. I don't want to have any walls. And they say, good luck. That's not possible, right? That's not strongly yeah. possible. Yeah, this is a give and take. So, yeah, you want to have big openings? Yeah, I'll design a steel portal frame. You have a steel beams and columns. You know, that will work as a solid wall for the house. Okay. Got it. So okay. This solid wall can be not just be outside, it could be inside too. So that's what I said. Yeah. This inside solid wall, which is not load bearing wall, could be a wall bracing wall, which is designed for, for the lateral load, which is wind load. So you cannot just take that out easily too. Okay. Um, because, yeah, okay. you know, so that's why it's most likely you can, but again, you, I would say, even if you find out, you think that, okay, no load being well, I would definitely say take a, a, you know, a consultation of a structural engineer because that wall could be your wall bracing wall. Um, and your building may not fall down immediately, but if there's a high wind and now that wall was part of this wall bracing system, and that may affect the structural integrity, right? When it's a big wind. Um, um, yeah. But, we also know that know that when we design a structural engineer, there are a lot of other factors of safety involved. Um, but but again, if you want to comply with the code and that wall was not, it's supposed to be there, not just the non-load bearing wall or partition wall, but also as a wall bracing wall. Those things you have to keep in mind. So basically, now let's say load bearing wall and non-load bearing wall. Just looking at it, you have to remember load bearing walls are the one that's supporting the load, which is a roof or floor. Not load bearing while not okay. So let's okay. go to the slide. I'm gonna just quickly go this one. So you see the roof trusses. Actually, I don't see anything having changed on the slide. You don't? I don't. I just see the first one that we've been looking at. Nah, maybe that's the. Oh, now I do. Now I do. Okay, go back to this. The other one. You see it now? 
I did. Maybe it's just on a little bit of a delay. I see one that says roof trusses running perpendicular to the wall. Correct. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, like, okay. Th that's the slide I'm looking at now. So this is uh, okay. this is let's say you have a wall. You see the wall. That wall. Um. You know, two by six or two by four construction on the left. Uh, there's a picture on the left side and the picture on the right side. For the uh, is that that's the wall and you have the, all these trusses roof trusses going in perpendicular direction mm -hmm. if you see like that so most likely if it's a two-story structure or one story structure with the roof trusses this is for roof trusses if you have a roof rafters a stick frame which is a little bit different okay so this is yeah. just the roof trusses which mostly in new construction nowadays all roof trusses 24 inches on center right that's how it is so mm -hmm. if you see the wall going in a perpendicular direction to the trusses, and now it can be load bearing. I'm not saying 100%, it can be, okay? Okay. Well, but, it would make sense because it's holding up the trusses because it's we don't know. No, that's not 100%, okay? Let me, yeah, I said it can be. And uh, there is next step you have to go to verify that if load bearing or uh, wall is not. I'll, I'll explain that to you. Okay. Um, so this one, first one is trusses are going in a perpendicular direction to the wall. So that means this wall could be load bearing wall. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. next slide. Do you see the next slide? Not yet. <laughs> it may just take a second to switch. Man, so I think. Oh, now it did. It switched. That's, it's strange that it takes so long. Okay, so now roof truss is running parallel to the wall. Okay, so these roof trusses are going parallel to the wall, right? Mm-hmm. If that's the case, it's 100%, it's not load bearing wall, okay? Got it, okay. Because it's it's not supporting, yeah, the trusses are going one direction and walls are going other direction, same direction. So this one, you can pretty much say, hey, this is pretty much, again, we don't know it's a load, but it's a wall bracing wall or not. That's a different story. Um, that's a different topic. Right now, we're talking about load bearing wall or non load bearing wall. So, this is non load bearing wall, right? Got it. So, awesome. now remember on the first the slide before, I said trusses are going in a perpendicular direction to the wall. That could be a bearing wall. Now, next step, um, it looks like you don't see the slide. That's the thing. It's coming. I'm sure it's going to happen. It's I, oh, now I do roof truss profile. So, it, Current, um, so what is this one? Okay, so so roof truss profile, you see this, right? Yes. This is a typical roof truss, wood, wood roof truss. They are built with two by four or two by six. It's just a two by four lumber framing, you know? Mm -hmm. They just built in a shape or triangle. So all the trusses, they have a lot of, uh, you know, smaller triangles. It mm -hmm. has to be minimum triangle. There's a reason why it's structurally that's not explained to it, but you you see all these smaller triangles on the big triangle inside. That's a trusses. Yes. And you see metal plate. It's called a melding plate. They are the one that are connecting this truss this truss member. So top part is called a top cord. You have a bottom cord, and all these uh, diagonal inside are called a webs. Okay. Now you have to look at this truss if you look at this one okay do you see the next slide i don't think so let me do this one now again. i do yep you did load bearing wall and non-load bearing wall continued okay so this is a profile of a truss okay mm -hmm. so now you see wall number one two three four okay so all these walls are going in perpendicular direction to the trusses now, look at the number one and four. Those are exterior walls. So those are load-bearing walls. Agree okay. one. Then you hear me, right? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm yeah, of this, course. Okay. Now, number two and three, okay, number two and three also going in perpendicular direction because one and four are exterior walls. Those are load-bearing walls, okay? But mm -hmm. now... Because the trusses has to be supported there in. That's it. Number number wall number two and three. So one of the wall is load bearing wall, other is not. Okay. So and the trick is, if you look at the wall number two, the location of the wall is somewhere. It's here. 
and location of wall number three is right here the joint is so next slide as i say again oh my god this thing is coming high okay so number three number one and number two number one is load bearing number two is non-load bearing why because at the joint mm. to be a load bearing wall the wall has to be on the joint Got it. Okay. So number two is not load bearing. Okay, even not at all. Hundred percent not load bearing. Hundred percent non load bearing, even though that wall is going in a perpendicular direction to the trusses. Okay. Okay. Now number three, it's, it can be load bearing wall or non load bearing wall because you know the wall may, might have just fell into the joint and it could be non load bearing wall, it, right? Yeah, but, but, it, but again, now because this wall fell right on the joint, so it could be load bearing wall. Okay, it can be load bearing wall. Now, but like say, okay, number four is load bearing wall. Number three, I remember I said when you have this load, that load has to be continuously transferred into your foundation system, right? Mm -hmm. So if the wall number three is load bearing wall, and let's say this is second floor, you have a first floor, you have a basement. So now let's say wall number three is a load bearing wall. That load bearing wall has to be supported by a beam or by another load bearing wall below on the first floor. You agree? Because yeah. the wall has to be continuously, load bearing wall has to be continued down to the foundation. Load should be transferred. So now if it's wall number three, you have to go down to the first floor. Mm -hmm. And under the wall number three, if there is a beam, or wood beam or steel beam or there's load bearing wall, then yeah. that's load bearing, that could be a load bearing wall. Then you have to go down to the basement if that wall is also continuous down to the foundation or there's a steel beam or gutter beam supporting that wall just underneath. It has to line up all the way down to the foundation. Then it's load bearing wall. But let's say wall number three on a second floor is right on the joint. But when you go down to the first floor, look up in the ceiling where the wall is, Let's say there is no wall below on the main level or there is no beam, means where that load coming from the wall number three, right? Because there is no beam, there is no wall. Means that wall is just partition wall. Got it, okay. So with the number three, you have to go one step down to the first floor, look up on the ceiling. If there is a beam supporting wall number three, or there is a wall below on a main level or first floor level lining up with wall number three. Now, then that wall could be load bearing wall. Then again, you have to go down to the basement again and see on the ceiling if there's a wall below on the basement or if, if there's a steel beam supporting that wall. So you have to go a couple of steps there. Got it. Okay. So it's really, it's a trickle down effect from Correct. the top yeah. all yeah. the way to the bottom. Um, all the way down to the bottom, yeah. But unless a wall falls on a joint, it's not doesn't even have a possibility of being load bearing. Not at all, zero. Yeah, that's okay. hundred and ten percent non load bearing wall. Wall number two is wall number two is non load bearing wall. Okay, so just to kind of quickly recap this, because I want to make sure yeah. I'm absorbing it every all of it too. So basically, all exterior walls load bearing, <laughs> like completely load bearing. And interior walls, if walls fall on a joint of, you know, a, a, a truss above it, it can be. And if that joint then has supports all the way down to the basement, then it's likely a load bearing wall, but not one necessarily 100%. If it does not fall on a joint, it's definitely not load bearing. Correct. Uh, cool. Also, Daniel, see, I say all exterior walls are load bearing wall, but there might be a wall, um, exterior wall, but trusses are going on a perpendicular directions, right? It could be, right? Because trusses yes. are going one direction and there is a one side of wall or of the house that could be parallel. But the reason I yes. said all exterior walls are load bearing walls because even though it's trusses might be going parallel to the wall and certain wall, but it's exposed outside. Mm. The wind load. The wind, when the wind hits the building, all the exterior walls will see the load. But the interior walls, they don't see any wind load, right? Yeah. We would not come inside, hopefully, if you don't leave the doors and the windows open. So 
the way Samsung is like you close doors and windows. So all the exterior wall doesn't matter if the trusses are going perpendicular to the wall or parallel to the wall, they are load bearing wall. Got it. Okay. So you don't want to take it out easily. Um, if you do, yeah, again, there are things you have to keep in mind. Uh, number three, like I say, this is on the first roof, then you go down to the first floor, then again go down to the basement to verify if that's load bearing wall or not. But like I say, number three, you're going down to the main level and you don't see any walls below, you don't see any beams below, then that's also not bird bearing wall. The reason is when you have a trusses like this, usually the, all the interior walls are not load bearing. All exterior, mm -hmm. the trusses are spanning outside, outside. That's how we designed. Unless your span is like 80, 90 feet long, which is very rare in residential construction. Uh, anything 40, 50, 60 feet long, uh, all these trusses always is that, uh, you know, span from outside to outside. So all the walls inside are not load bearing wall. Um, Got it. You know, also a span of the truss also depends this depth on slope because if nowadays with the modern homes, you have a flat roof, means that your depth of the truss could be very minimum. So you have a 60 feet, your depth is only 24 inch. It's not going to work, you know? So yeah. Yeah, trusses can span 60, 70, 80 feet, but then this depth also have to increase for that truss to span outside to outside. But in general, like say new construction, usually um, trusses this set, um, always going outside to outside, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, All right, cool. Now go to the second, do you see this slide? Yes. Okay, so on this slide, man, so now, well now you have to go down to the floor below, or this is kind of in the basement, right? In the basement, and you have this floor joist that are going perpendicular to the wall. So now, again, this could be load-bearing wall, not load-bearing wall. That depends on the floor joist span, because this is maybe 14-inch joist. This is the eye joist. This could be 14-inch joist or 12-inch joist or 18-inch joist. So depending on the joist, spacing and span, um, you can say this is load bearing wall or not. Okay, for example, if you have a 14 inch eye joist, uh, you know, spanning 16 inches on center, it can expand about 21, 22 feet, or maybe 23 feet. If we see, so if you did this wall and your your joist span is like 26 feet then you know it, you know, because the joist cannot expand. At that point, you may need, to, you know, help from a structural engineer because then you really need to know the joist and the spacing and what type of joist they are using and how much it can expand to find out the load bearing. Hmm. But like I said, if there's a wall above on the first floor. Then it's definitely load bearing. Yeah, and load bearing wall and supporting up from the roof and then it's load bearing. And usually when you have a load bearing wall, Okay, you see the second slide. You see this line now. All right. Not yet. I still. Uh, now I do. Yes, yeah, so I, I. I realize I have to go back every time. No, <laughs> it's all good. I see it now. Yes. Sir. So Steel either, bearing. like I said, there's a load bearing wall above, or it's supporting the truss or joist or trusses. You have to have either this, you know, brick micro lamp LVL or a steel beam in columns. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, and what is, what are the benefits of the steel beam versus the uh, the LDL, LVL? Sorry. Yeah, so it's a good question, Daniel. Because LVL, you have to remember, is is still a wood. Okay, this is a wood. Yeah. So with the wood, you have a regular lumber, two by ten and two by six or two by twelve. Um, your LVL micro lamp um, could be fourteen inch, eighteen inch, sixteen inch, twenty four inch, even deep. So these are like, you know, uh, engineered wood. So it can expand long, much longer, and it can carry much more load than regular wood, two by 10 or two by 12. Mm. That's why these micro lamps are. But then if the micro lamp does not work for a certain span, then you do a steel beam. So the steel beams are definitely more stronger than the LVLs. So if the LVLs are not working, micro lamps are not working for the span, in a beam supporting the floor or roof above, then you go with the steel beam. Got it. Um, now, is there a maximum length that they make 
either of the steel or the micro lamb uh, beams in? Like, is it, can you only get something like 50 feet long or is there like a maximum on that or, or something to keep yeah. in mind? That's a good question. I have not, I have not thought about it, but it's still, as I say again, they still, you can do all these commercial building, office building, you can go for a long span, right? It's still. Yeah. But wood has a limitation. You know, you don't see, mostly you see wood construction on residential buildings. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, big high rise building, commercial building, you don't see it. So their span is maybe like 20, 30 feet, maybe they do it. Um, but anything, when you go more than like 20, 30 feet long, I think it becomes uneconomical because what happens, the depth of the beam becomes too deep. Oh, okay. Yeah, so longer the span it is, I can design this micro lamp, then depth of this micro lamp has to be deeper, means that you have a bulkhead, bigger bulkhead, which you would, you know, probably would not like it. That makes sense. So, because it has to be wider. It has it's to be width. deeper, mostly deeper, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, that makes but, a lot of sense. Yeah, but if you go with the steel beam, then with the same span, maybe instead of 18 inch LBL, I can probably just do an 8 inch or 10 inch only because oh, definitely the steel. are stronger than LBL. Now, lumber price and LBLs and micro lamp, everything is going so crazy. Um, it's still, it's still price is not also falling down. It's still expensive, but uh, so funny. My guys, uh, my guys, we do new construction a lot. Um, is that they prefer a steel beam than a heavy a micro lamp because you have to remember micro lamp. You might need the two or three different ply. Then you have to bolt it together. You have to carry up. It could be really, mm. you, know, you know, labor uh, intensive. But the steel beam, yes, it's a heavy too, but it's more manageable on the size and my guys they prefer with the steel beam in post than the heavy micro lamp so i always design a steel beam but there are some of the contractor a smaller contractor they didn't feel comfortable with steel beam that did you know they don't like handling steel i understand that. um but most of the new construction builders you know either way lbl or the steel beam they are okay no they don't complain and cost wise it's almost the same, I think. Now is you know, your steel beam and micro lamp could be the same. It's crazy to even think of that, but yeah, right. I I've heard similar things where they're not very different in price. Like if you want a Trex deck, which used yeah. to be like splurging, it's no longer really a splurge compared to regular uh, wood that you like a wood deck that you'd yeah. put down. Um, it's not really very good. much in cost difference anymore. But that's interesting. Okay, that's so cool. Yeah, sure. And the last one you see is this is let's say this wall is load bearing wall, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and there are other walls in the perpendicular wall, you know, walls in parallel direction to the joist, those are not load bearing walls. But then, whatever you have this uh, load bearing wall, you have to put a thick in footing, you have to make a you know, slab a little bit thicker because generally, your basement slab is like a four inch slab with wire mess. Um, but if you have a, you know, bearing wall, you have to put a thickened footing. This is called a thickened slab with the rebars. Um, so that the load is now the wall is, you know, footing is thicker so that you can safely distribute the load coming from the wall into the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what, that's what we do at the load bearing wall. If the non-load bearing wall, you know, just a slab because that's just a, um, I think that's it. Man. So awesome. I, it's a, I learned a lot from this. I have many notes that I that I took, and I think this this has made it a lot easier, or at least for me to kind of have a basic idea of what really can be or probably is load bearing versus what is very unlikely to be load bearing when walking through these properties. Um, and this is applicable to basically anyone. Like if not only if you're an agent helping investors, but if you're helping your standard home buyer or if you are a flipper and you're trying to do some basic calculations yourself when you're not your own uh, GC or contractor, it's important to have these kind of basic understandings of what really uh, 
on how to do this, like on the fly, in person, in the field. So this was great, Raj. Thank you so much for going through the, all the trouble. The examples were really helpful. I found them really helpful. No problem. I'm glad I, could, you know, I wanted to do this. Um, because one thing, like I said, I've been doing this structural design for some 2003, which is about you know, 18, 19 years now. Yeah. So a lot of a contract and nothing wrong. You know, I'm not trying to criticize any contractor. They're great. We need a contractor because we're investors. Um, but again, you know, their contractors versus a structural engineer, sometimes you may want to get advice from a structural engineer and don't listen to a contractor only. I'm not saying don't listen to them. I have many examples I can give you all day long and the contractor, you know, they have, I've been doing things for 30 years, 25 years. You're telling me it's wrong. And I'm saying, yes, you're wrong. And because this is why. And yeah. I have so many houses. I'm telling you, they built a house. They did all the walls and reinforcing, like I said, because contractors said, don't worry about it. I've been doing it for 25 years. This is not a load bearing wall. Let's take it out. And then um, your house is start sagging. I had like such a bag, you know, hundreds of thousand dollars of lost shit happened to my client in condominiums because mm -hmm. this nice contractor, um, you know, working for many years, um, he says it's not load bearing wall. Let's take it out. I'm sure he meant well. I don't think he meant to mm harm. -hmm. Um, his client, but then they took it out that your floor starts sagging and it's a, you know, big mess and it's total design and drawing and they had to all that. So I would say, instead of just trusting contractor only, you could just call up a structural engineer, you know, maybe like six, $700 or something. I don't know how other structural engineer charge, but you know, just have their opinion about the wall, if it is load bearing wall or not. I think that may send you, you know, headaches. Um, Oh, and for sure. I, I always believe in seeking advice of right professional. So I'll, I don't assume anything um, in my profession. And I advise everybody in my office too, my engineer. I said, I don't want you to assume anything. Even if you feel like you are 99%, you know, correct, there is still 1% chance you feel like you could be wrong. I want to make sure you get 100 because you, it's, you're talking yeah. about the integrity of the building. People are living in the house. If the beam fell, your structure fell, if people are dying. It's not even funny, you know? Yeah, I mean, that just happened in Florida a month ago. Yes. That just was just happened challenge. in Florida. So this is definitely a reality. Like, this could 100% happen uh, if not taken seriously. So don't skimp on your structure is <laughs> what we <laughs> talked about. Yeah. Maybe a little lesson at the end of this. But um Raj, thanks again so much. This was tremendous. And I hope that it brings a ton of value to our grid investor community, which I'm probably pretty sure that it will. But if you guys have any other questions about uh, uh, trusses, structure, how to tell if a, a wall is load bearing or any other questions, leave it in the comments and Raj and I will be happy to get back to you yeah. um, as fast as we can. But we will see you guys next week uh, on our builder series again, one o'clock every Thursday. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.